part two, another bonus code zone, and we're getting these things because it's pouring down with rain outside, uh, which means I can't go anywhere, I can't go out, I wasn't, well, well I was planning to take X10 out, we can't do that, uh, so they're doing something else, which leaves me a bit of free time to sit and build my hurdy-gurdy, uh, and yesterday was a very popular stream, I was surprised, which camera should I look at, where have we got, there's a camera, uh, yesterday I was quite surprised with uh, just how many people were interested in seeing a hurdy-gurdy being made. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you get everything on this channel, don't you? Uh, so, as you can see, uh, nothing has changed. I, I've left the bench precisely as, as it was yesterday, which is a good starting point. Uh, we'll see if anybody's actually planning on uh, showing up uh, soon. Can you never know with the uh, the Twitch uh, the Twitch stats whether they're accurate or not? Uh, so we got as far as building this mechanism here, which is the bit that's going to. This is effectively the virtual bow. Uh, which is going to rub against the strings. Uh, and then we started to construct this uh, gear mechanism, which is quite elaborate. Uh, since yesterday, I've slightly repositioned the camera. Uh, hopefully, it's a little bit more stable. It'll wobble a bit, but not anywhere near as much as it was doing. I did look a little bit back at the footage yesterday, so it was really wobbly. But I've also sorted out lighting. So I've, I've moved my studio lights, uh, so we shouldn't be uh, encumbered by the darkness, which is currently a problem. If you've just seen on the Discord server, I've posted a picture of the setup, uh, and because it, it's pouring with rain, it's very dark outside, so we wouldn't have had enough light. Uh, and we got as far as this gear. We built a small hammer as well. There's the hammer. Uh, we extracted the extraction tool. Uh, we've got a little bit of wax, some sandpaper, uh, and uh, some pegs and bits and pieces. So there's, my desk is becoming a mess. There's bits of chipped wood all over the place. And we're going to continue assembling this gear assembly. Now, my thoughts on this gear assembly is why is it so elaborate? What's going on? Uh, and I don't know the answer yet. I've not looked forward in the instructions. Uh, I reckon it's for two reasons. Uh, firstly, it's just elaborate for the sake of being elaborate. Now, the you know these things want to look like complicated puzzle mechanisms, so that could be it. Uh, the other thing is, it occurred to me that actually creating large diameter shafts out of plywood uh, is probably quite a tricky thing to do. Uh, so having a gear assembly like this could potentially compensate. So we have another gear in here, so it's gears turning gears turning a big gear. Uh, if the gear ratio is important, that could come into it, but I think it's actually more just an, a sort of a, an elaborate way of having a larger shaft. Uh, for this overall spur gear. Uh, the gear moves reasonably nicely. Uh, this one's a bit sticky. Uh, we will see. I mean, they don't sort of free spin. Some of them do. Uh, and we did chip a small tooth off one of them uh, yesterday. It doesn't, hasn't actually affected the full gear. It is there. Uh, so far we've got Rosso. Hello. Uh, Magetsub. Uh, so yes, those expecting some code. Well, today is a bit more uh, hurdy-gurdy building. Uh, but I always just have a bit of a tidy up. There's all these bits, which I, I'm going to best make sure they're not important bits. Uh, so we got as far as this instruction here, which is where we've got our four gears. I'll move that out of the way. Our four gears. Uh, and now we're on to uh, finding some way of mounting this gear assembly uh, to. Oh, hang on. Mounting this gear assembly to something. I don't know what, but we need to find that something. Uh, and this something is parts, we're going to need part 12, part 14, and part 13. Now they were part 3, part 13 looks very similar, it's like a little peg thing. Uh, Alter, hello. Uh, right, so it's not on that board. No, it's on that board, there we go. Straight away, part 12. Now, the fun and games yesterday was popping these things out. So part 12 and part 14 and part 13. Well, part 13s we've got there. Part 14s we've got there. So let's pop those out first. They should be reasonably easy, he says. As he boisterously starts trying to push this thing out and it goes all over the place and starts splitting the wood. There we go. So 14, uh, 13... Ooh, we might need the knife on 13, I think. I was watching the stream back uh, yesterday. Uh, it kind of needs a bit more background music, but I don't want to put background music on. Uh, one, because I think a lot of people that watch my stuff tend to put their own background music on things. 
Uh, but secondly, it causes all sorts of copyright problems and everything else. I don't want to get involved in all that. There we go. Ooh, a bit delicate that one. See that's there we go. So there we we push it a bit too uh, a bit too hard. Yeah, things are a bit fragile. So push it a bit too hard. I mean, it's not compromised the integrity of the part, but it has uh, compromised the uh, the decoration. So that's just going to have to come off. Right, so we've got our little wheel. We've got our peg. Come on, camera. Focus. Focus. Focus, camera. There we go. Uh, and uh, now we need the actual mounting thing, which is this large assembly up here. Now this large assembly has a second gear, it's 17, which we, we do actually need later on. Now, so I'm just going to pop that whole thing out if I can. I don't want to put any pressure on anything. And we have got a, a spur 13, which we could use if we do find that that little chip that we just put in it is a problem. Yeah, no background music. I, I tend to agree. And it's easy, easy enough for, if it's just a vocal stream to, to put your own background music on. Very delicate. There we go. Right. So now we can start working with this piece. Don't like popping the gears out. It is a bit more complicated than it should be. Let's have a look at the knife. So I've set up my uh, studio lights. I don't use them as much as I, I should do. Uh, mainly because what I got into the habit of doing all my videos during the daytime. Uh, that's probably going to have to change now as the winter months are coming in. And I want to start making videos again. I was thinking whilst I've got the build bench set up, what's the overall appetite for some sort of electronics focused videos? It's still software stuff, but doing more like you know, embedded systems kind of thing. It's convenient, you see, having a bench here, because I can put my oscilloscope on here, and we can do some circuit debugging and some PCB design, put some microcontrollers on there, and see what happens. Well, this one really doesn't want to go. You'd love some Pico stuff. Uh, Danicron, hello. Yes, I think quite a lot of people want the embedded stuff. Uh, and it is kind of... It's kind of like actually what I do, right? So that that's more the game stuff is is fun for me. It's a distraction, but actually the embedded system stuff is a bit more what I can talk about. Uh, why is this one really? Oh, it's coming! It's coming! Uh, uh, it feels like there's actually a physical wedge stopping that one. It's almost as if the the laser hasn't cut all the way through. Man, I shouldn't be able to do that, right? If there were two separate parts, there we go. Let's be a bit more aggressive with it. Right. Let's move the cutting tool. Uh, so it says I take peg thirteen. I have the part like this. Peg thirteen is going to go up through the bottom of the part, like this. And from peg thirteen, we have peg. Sorry, we have spacer fourteen. Now, that doesn't look like it's going to be a bearing, but I am just going to take the edges off it, just in case. Now, we're definitely not going to get the hurdy-gurdy finished today. Uh, and uh, there will probably be some other code zones in between, but it's a nice little weekend project for when it's raining like this. I don't know what it is. I like the weather outside. The weather outside sort of very much dictates my mood. Um, and so when it's raining like this, and maybe it's a childhood thing, I like to actually do physical construction of things. Uh, right. Uh, so that then just happily sits on top of that there. Now it's saying I should apply wax to all of these gear surfaces, uh, but I... I might just end up using sort of a mineral oil or something later on. Uh, then we need to put on gear 17, which looks a bit decorative. That's going to sit in the middle of all that. Although, I, I, I kind of kind of want to make now uh, a laser CNC machine. <laughs> 
<laughs> when I start seeing all these things. No, oh, I don't want to go down that route. We end up then with all sorts of additional bits of pieces and gear and stuff to maintain. It's like people that go, oh, Javid, why don't you like make your own circuit boards and things? Well, because it's so cheap to get them made now. Why mess around with the chemicals? And I mean, it's fun. Everybody's got to do it once. Ugh. This one again. See, it's quite strange. It, it's it's totally free, but there's something somewhere. That just wants to stop it from playing. Right, inspecting that. That looks okay. Uh, Gusco, hello. Oh, hang on, I've got all sorts of chats. Vasso, uh, there's nothing to do with Bosa Pico myself. The suspense. <laughs> uh, the embedded systems is your job duality. Yeah, uh, hurdy gurdies are awesome. Yeah, well, they seem awesome. I've never played one before. We will do. Uh, that gear is going to sit inside the. See, that already feels dreadful. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how this is all going to... I, I think that's just... I think it's just decoration. I don't think it's altogether functional. I mean, it does actually look functional. When we go further over in the instructions, these gears actually run on the inside of uh, another tooth. I don't know, but it does feel a bit, a bit sticky. Uh, right, let's go and find part 18, which is uh, just like a little uh, collet to finish these off. There it is, part 18. It's tiny. Part 18. Sandpaper. Uh, Gusco, hello. Desk 4, what's going on here? We're building a hurdy gurdy desk. It's a hurdy gurdy kit. Now, if those that didn't watch it yesterday, um, it's a kit that I bought completely out of my own money, so there's no sponsorship involved in this, uh, but it seems to be uh, quite a nice kit. I was put onto it by Hulig from the Discord server. Uh, it's a instrument that you build yourself out of this laser cut plywood. Something a bit different to coding. Yeah, that's just going to sit on the end there. I'm not sure we get this right because I've got a feeling that once I sort of sandwich this together, yeah, it's not going to be as free spinning as it should be. Mind you, it surprised us yesterday, didn't it? We may have to apply some work. When it was all sort of locked together, uh, it, it actually started to work very well. Push that down. Ooh. Oh, a little chip there. So it did actually provide a spur 18, but I don't think, I don't think we need it. So that runs, but it does stick. It's probably going to need a bit of running in. <laughs> Microcontroller with good documentation, cheap as hell, sign me up. <laughs> uh, first time chat, I've always wanted to do one of these. They look relaxing. They do seem quite relaxing. What sort of algorithm have they used to fit those shapes? Uh, it's called a brain. <laughs> so I think the reason this, so this feels a bit sort of a bit sticky. I'm just trying to look to see are there any particular teeth combinations that are giving me a problem. It kind of looks like maybe. See that that chipped one there. Oh, 
but more it looks like just the gears are not sort of squashed together nicely they're not meshing too good See, that one wants to separate now that might also be because it's not inside its enclosing ring so potentially when we actually put this in the ring now uh, that's going to squash it all together uh, that may, things may run a little bit smoother. We'll have a look. Uh, but I'm getting all sorts of warnings that I do need to sort of apply wax to everything. Let's just try and find this this outer ring, uh, which I think is piece 19. So it's, uh, it's this piece here. Uh, Speedy C is here. Sorry you missed the latest Twitch stream. <laughs> it's okay, Speedy. So I don't know that you always watch the stuff. Right, so this has all sorts going on. We've got a gear inside a gear. Now it's this it's this part, it's, it's this bit that's going to sort of sandwich all of those together. Now that might actually start to make things run a little smoother. Now, according to the instructions, it looks like it's that way. Try and hold that. Yeah, it's debatable as to whether it has or not. Yeah, Dragon Eye, we were just saying it would be pretty cool to uh, to make our own little uh, CNC laser cutter. But it's it's the knowing the one I've got at work. It's actually getting all the lasers set up is more complicated than the X Y bed. And then you've got to maintain the thing. I mean that kind of works, providing that the forces are reasonably evenly distributed. As soon as you start putting any skew into this, it it just doesn't want to play at all. So I hope the rest of the build uh, is of a high enough quality to sustain that. We also said we should wax these. The trouble is I have no idea how we can actually wax these. Uh, sensibly. I can just apply a little bit to every single tooth. I guess a, a nicer way would be to take a brush and actually try and brush on some molten wax onto these surfaces. Yeah, but even then I just I think as soon as you take the brush out of the molten wax, it's going to dry straight away on your brush and everything's just going to be awkward. And once you've got molten wax on things like, like the wood, it's never coming off again, so it'll spill everywhere and look like a mess. So I'm hoping we just whoop, I'm hoping we just need a bit of a running in session and try and smooth it all down. Take all of the very sharp edges off some of the wood. Right, let's continue with the build anyway. Oh, I have got a drink today. In fact, today I'm drinking. Ta da! <laughs> Yeah, you never get a uh, molten wax on the carpet. That's a uh, that's just a no no. Never going to happen. Never going to get that out. Uh, right. Oh, hang on. I've got a ping. Oh. Amazon saying something was delivered an hour ago, which it was. Uh, right. I need to wax those uh, clips and push those onto parts twenty and twenty one. Mm, okay. Let's have a look. So it says I've got to wax these sort of little prongs.
The only problem with doing sort of electronics focused work, uh, firstly is, is unlike the rest of the videos on the channel, uh, you, you've got to make some assumptions that people are familiar with the basics of electronics. I'm not going to sit there and talk about Ohm's law every single time I use a resistor. Uh, also, it's difficult for people to necessarily repeat the work, which is one of the things I quite like about the channel. Uh, try to keep it easy for people to do it at home. But also, it's very difficult to do things in one video. So the, everything would become a project, which is actually something I'm trying to move away from doing. So these multi-part video uh, things, because they, they end up just consuming all of my time. Yeah, right, I'm looking for parts 20... Now, what does it say? 20 and 21. Uh, and they are on... So it, remember now, it actually indicates to me. 20 and 21. Nope. 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 Yes. The 20 and 21 are these here. Ooh. 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 Snapping noises. Make that before I break it. No, nope, I'm going to get the cutter and have a look. Where are these? Uh, where are these fastened on there? The the Should just make life a bit easier. Now these have a little arrow uh, marking on, there's all sorts of uh, parts. Oh, now which was 20 and which was 21? That's a, a good question. So if I look at the map for the part, it's putting it that way. And it says part 20 is that one. Goes like that. And part 21 goes like that, to sort of sandwich it all together. That's what we'll try. Uh, you also need tools for electronics. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's a trickier thing to get people to do. Uh, looking back at it, it was a huge fan of wax on the carpet, I guess. Now, do you find coding in C code uh, cleaner than C++ in some sense? I know what you mean, uh, but the answer is no, not anymore. Um, I, you get you get to a point where you just you just stop caring about stuff like that. I know there are people watching the chat that you know, advocate really simplistic programming languages like C, and it is a simplistic programming language, uh, but. I quite like now some of the. I like the utility of C++. The fact that you can you can actually do quite complicated things very very quickly now. You know, I I, I have no problems at all with reinventing the wheel on most things, uh, but it's nice to know that you've just got these tools there and they're going to work and everybody knows how to use them and they've got reasonably predictable behaviour. Right, I'm going to go for it because this is, I think, once we're committed to this, we're done. Right, it moves in one direction. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, as, as, as expected, it moves better. Now it's all within a rigid frame and it's not uh, flapping about everywhere. Uh, is it a needlessly elaborate mechanism? I think it is.
Uh, but I do think it probably just needs somebody sitting here and doing this with it whilst watching an episode of something just to get it all to sort of whir in and whir out and smooth down, that sort of thing. Uh, let me just have a quick catch up with some of the chats. Yeah, electronics tooling is uh, its not cheap. I, I mean, I've got myself some fairly cheap stuff here. I've got myself a little oscilloscope, which is a USB one. It only goes up to 100 megahertz, and that's that's going to be fine for a lot of the stuff uh, that I would t intend to do on the channel anyway. Um, micros and things, they're all pretty cheap, but I just don't want to mess around with breadboard and things. I'd, I'd be straight into designing the PCBs and, and take it from there. I mean, Gusco, the, uh, the the USB one I have, actually, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, first time chat from Rubinsky Play Z. Uh, test, well, your test worked. Uh, yes, Dragon Knight, a hurdy gurdy. We did a uh, number episode one yesterday. Um, we get some quite like C. That's the thing. I think you hit on a good point that it's a different mindset programming in different languages. Yeah, the more I'm moving this, the 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 nicer it's becoming. Okay, so we've got a gearbox of some description, uh, but I think it's it's purely a fashion accessory. It, it has no purpose because these aren't connected to anything that drives. I imagine we're going to drive here. And this is going to drive probably one of these uh, wheels up here. I'm guessing. Probably something like that at the moment. So it's just artificially ornate, which is okay. I like that. Turning the page. Right. Oh, now it's going to get big. We're getting big structures coming on now. So we want parts. Oh, we've got, says, we've got a little hammer icon. It says we need to use the hammer uh, on this one. Excellent. Oh dear, we've also got some e extraordinarily elaborate things to cut out as well. Uh, right. Uh, right, okay, well let's start with the parts. So 22, 24, and 23. It says 22 and 24 to begin with. So this big section here is 22. So this is like the, the body section by the looks of it. I think rather than risking damaging that, we'll, uh, we will actually try and cut out some of those. So, jab you, 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 you. Held in place is a lot of things. You see, I always found Java to be a nice language to, to code and I, I know what you mean because I, I, I say uh, when I've told people before when I program in Java I tend to feel cleaner for some reason uh, I, I wouldn't program in Java now anyway Java's a mess these days but it used to be I always felt like a, a nice a nice complete language to be programming in that's going to be controversial isn't it Ooh. Okay, so that's part 22 and part 24, which is this one here. That's 24. I'm just going to finish off these just in case they have... can be really temperamental. I just find breadboards are one of those things that uh, once you've made it, you've got to unmake it all. and That, that just frustrates me. Uh, first time chat from ooh, mm, oh, hang on. Moss Yeno Lizzing White Tooth. Some lubricant. Yeah, it's got, it actually provides some lubricant. It provides you with a little uh, uh, like candle thing to wax things up a bit. Right, so it says 
it's like that and that's on the inside going down like that so that's the joint that we're forming and I've got a feeling once it says we've got to use the hammer to put that into place but I don't feel that we needed the hammer very much there seem loose enough there, there is the hammer Yep, that's doing nothing. I think that's uh, quite happily in its resting point. So now we need part 23, which is that other big section. Pull that one out. See where the things are actually held in place. Let's see if we can get it to focus. This will be a tricky one. About there and there. There you go. Where, where, the, where it's held in place on the, the framework, there's little tiny uncut sections, which is uh, what well, you just need to sort of burst through. Yeah, Rosso says hammer time. Uh, USB logic analyzer. Yeah. Mm. I think there's a lot of tools which are sold with the promise of these are going to be revolutionary, you absolutely need them for your kit. I've been spoiled though because my first set of tools was provided by the university and I had a £25,000 mixed signal oscilloscope with uh, 32 logic inputs and 4 analog inputs running at 2 giga samples. Uh, I, I did all sorts with that, it was really good. It was uh, an Agilent something or other. Uh, Crafts Dwarf, hello, what are you building? We're building a hurdy-gurdy kit. Um, usually we do programming on this channel, but uh, today, something a bit different, we're building a hurdy-gurdy. Um, we've got quite a few uh, intricate parts, which I think are going to start coming together to form the body of the instrument. Uh, once I've got that on there, it's saying, I think, that one on, no, 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 let's get this the right way around, it is that way up. Yes, that way up. Now this one seems a bit stiffer than uh, the other one did. I still didn't need the hammer. What has happened to Java that it's a mess these days? It's just been passed around. Corporates messed around with it. Uh, it doesn't know when to just cut its losses. Yeah, it's a, I, w I wouldn't, as I'm, I'm responsible at the, the business I work for, for sort of choosing its digital direction and things. I just can't, I can't guarantee that in five years' time, any of the tools that I need for Java are still going to be around and exist. So I can't guarantee that I can maintain the software, uh, which uh, rules it out. I just can't use it. Uh, Rubinsky plays. Yes, you're here finally. Your test was successful. Feels great going back to C and starting up a new uh, new project, making a simple retro game with SDL two. You know, you know, I have to have to say this: there are better better libraries than SDL two these days, um, and maybe some OpenGL. Java always help felt uh, heavy to voxel. <sighs> Yeah, I, I guess you, you you know when you're using Java, you know what you're in for. Right? It's you're not looking for performance, but for quick cross-platform GUIs, it was very good. Now it isn't. Now it's terrible. Uh, what is a hurdy-gurdy? It's an instrument, yes. Yeah, clever princess. This is uh, the problem we had yesterday. <laughs> very, very delicate operation.
Yeah, I think if you're serious about electronics, Gus, go. You need uh, you need serious instrumentation too. We also have um, a really cool signal generator, and we also had a dedicated logic analyzer. Although that was very old, so it wasn't great at high frequencies at all. But it had loads of input channels and could look for patterns. Now, which other libs would you recommend than SDL two? <laughs> I like the chat answer that one. <laughs> Uh, right, so now we're up to... Oh, we're inserting one of the parts we just made. So this part here, this is going to be inserted into here. It splays it apart like so. I don't know where it goes to, though. Oh, and then we've got all sorts of pegs and things to tap. This is a complicated component. So that's going to sit in there line up with at least one of these holes oh we get some starting a flame war there right okay so that's going to sort of give that some definition and a bit of an angle. Now we've got to get out. <laughs> yes, if you're not into sort of removing uh, elaborate parts, then this next bit is going to be quite horrific. Uh, we have to remove parts 25 just 25 for now. And I think it's giving us a spare one, because <laughs> this, is, this is what we've got to get out uh, without breaking it and splitting it all over the place. Right. Oh dear. Now let's have a look. So it, it is tacked in a few corners. Uh, there's some bits that haven't come out when they've manufactured the plate. Uh, there's another one down here, but I guess it's decorative on both sides. Now, what I've noticed and, and what I'm looking forward in the instructions is just in these corners here, you can see they're actually clearly a square cutout. Uh, so that's the, there for some support pegs later on. Right, let's uh, let's have a crack at it. So we'll go from from the back like this and just try and burst some of these. Uh, I've been calling them tangs. I'm not entirely sure what they're. The actual mechanical name for them is. There we go. Ooh. Nothing is moving. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you'd be the first Voxel. Uh, somebody has done a PGE sort of semi port into uh, into JavaScript at least before. This build looks fun. It is fun, except for this sort of stuff. You you need to be uh, one not full of caffeine and two uh, probably on blood pressure medication in order to extract these parts. Wondering if the other ones prefer to go. No, I think I'm going to have to cut at these a little bit more. It's just so it, it's so ornate. I just don't want to take the chance. Right, that top part's out. That bit is out. That one's still held down somewhere. Just hold it up to this light I've installed. 
Okay. Oh, clunk. That sounded positive, didn't it? Right, so they're loose. Where else are we held down? I think we might actually be held down there. Okay, that looks more positive, doesn't it? Right, now awkwardly, it looks like there's a part that should have come out when they were laser cutting. This one here. I'm guessing this felt what we need is just a little bit more tension. There we go. Right. Excellent. <laughs> right, now PG3, it will, uh, I think, uh, well, it is going to include sort of the transform stuff out of the box. Tabs. Tabs, yeah, that's a better way to describe it, isn't it? Tabs. Get the wood glue ready. <laughs> I haven't got any wood glue, so I have to be very, very careful here. Right, now there's another one of those to do in a minute, which we'll come back to. Uh, but in the meantime, it says, I now need parts 26 and 27, which are not on the... We're 26 and 27, they're on the, the big one. Big ones. Start putting my assembly back there. 26 and 27 are these ones here, uh, which are these pins which are going to hold in this decorative piece and simultaneously hold in the mechanism. Oh, gotta hold your breath doing these. Oh. Right, let's make sure that they're uh, not too bad. Just tidy them up a little bit. It seems to have come out okay. One of them splits a little tiny bit around the corner, but again, the integrity of the part is is okay. I think you're always going to get that with sort of laminated, uh, laminated board. Come on, focus. Because it's uh, it's plywood, it's made from very thin strips of wood, which is all laminated and glued together. Uh, if the glue is compromised along an edge somewhere, then it is going to split out. Right. In the meantime, we're going to look at putting this into there. Our ornate decorative part. It's going to sit there. Twenty sixes, which are the long, longer ones. Oh dear! Right, that's the wrong way round. That's that. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so one of those is going upright, ah hang on, which side are they attacking this from? Uh, they're attacking it from that side aren't they? Nope, nope, they're attacking it from that side. 
and they're saying do one thing a day. I'm skipping too many instructions ahead there, that's that's part of the problem I'm just facing. So that's going there, that's going on there, and it says use 26, which is a long one, going upright in there, and 27, which is a short one, going in that hole. And then once that's gone through, that's also which one's that going to clip into? So that awkwardly clips those. So those holes don't line up with the bottom; they line up with the top. So that's going to clip in there. Move the camera so you can see what's going on. Now that's going to go. into the like that right this looks like we're at a critical part of the build Only because nothing's square. So it actually is going to make holding this in whilst I'm trying to push these pegs in quite difficult. I've got to do two at the same time. And we learned from yesterday that they get things get a bit creaky. Worry about the ornate piece in a minute. Oh, this is actually very tricky. Because even I know you guys can't see, but even I can't see the uh, the hole this one needs to attack. So we're going through there, through the upper hole. That's going to sit about there, which it does. And then that's going to open up. You know, I think it might be easier. Shame, can we not take these apart now? No. I can't even sort of put that on afterwards. Oh, you can. You can kind of hook it on afterwards. That might be a sensible way to do that. The nail biting bit. I'm going to apply some uh, wax lubrication to this because it's very tight.
Okay, I think we're getting the we're getting the creaks of doom. Let's put that on before we commit. Try and sandwich that. Right, I think that's it. So that was actually quite a challenging component to fit because one, you can't see what you're aiming for, uh, but two, you're going through three different size holes. And now we can put in the smaller one. So, smaller one below. And then I'll catch up with the chat. There we go. Click clunk. Oh, oh that was a. Uh, oh. Uh, voxel disappeared. See you later, Voxel. Uh, Eustace seems good. It does. Uh, in which scale will I be tuning the hurdy gurdy? In any that I can play anything I recognise. <laughs> so, duck butt with vector thrust says hello. First time chat. And uh, Danny Cron being a good bot. Good bot. Oh, nice. Well, that was uh, that was actually pretty tough, and we kind of got to do it again now with these additional pegs going into the next hole. But this one, at least once things have now lined up, it should be, he says, should be a little simpler. Now I will uh, pre-wax these though again. It does look like lubricating these makes quite a difference. Uh, that one's going that way round this time. Right, okay. And into the... I've got to do this on the other side yet. And this little one is going to go at the bottom. So these ones are actually facing the opposite way this time. Because they kind of hook on to the, the part in a different place. Ooh, just don't like the amount of pressure that you have to apply to this. So that's one. Two. Right, so that looks quite nice. So it's a nice decorative bit on the side. We've got our gears. It's working quite nicely. Uh, we have to do the other side though before we continue, uh, and then we can put in the other part that we've made. Because looking ahead, uh, the other part sort of sits uh, inside here, and it all starts coming together. Ah, now what I hadn't expected is that this is actually a ninety-degree gear. Now, that's interesting. So that gear is going to sit at 90 degrees on there. I hope they mesh. I hope they mesh well, or else none of this is going to work. Now, right, let's go and get the other ornate piece out then. Oh. 
this one. At least we learnt a lesson last time that we actually need to be a bit more a bit more cutty with the cutters. Okay, when it goes clunk, we know we've done it. That one didn't go clunk. That one did. That one did. There we go. Oh yes, look at that. Right, I think we're, we're starting to get a bit of momentum. Now we understand how this, this is supposed to work. Uh, before I move on, I need the pegs again for the other side, I guess, don't I? Uh, 26, 27, they're up here. Okay. These pegs. So we need two more 26s again. Now I'm hoping that because things have squared up a bit and we've gained a bit of experience now doing the other side, this one should be a bit quicker. 27. Oh, we've got a little bit of a fragment again, but it's not affected the uh, the bit that matters. Okay, good. Uh, Buzzy Mix, hello, first time uh, chatter. What are we making? Yes, as the chat said, it's a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> that might not necessarily uh, help many people that ask that question, because uh, I, I must confess I didn't know uh, what a, a hurdy gurdy was. Straight away, Hurdy Gurdy to me was always a character out of the Muppet Show. It turns out it's a it's a musical instrument. Oh, things are happening. Turns out it's a musical instrument. I'm guessing from some part of Europe. I'm hesitant to say Sweden, but for, I. I Got in my head, it's some sort of Scandinavian country. It probably isn't. I thought he was making that up. It's all lies. Lies and ignorance. Right. Wax this up. Good and proper. Yeah, so that's the... Everything's kind of lining up much better first time around this time. You mean the Swedish chef? Yeah. <laughs> the Muppets weren't actually a huge thing in the UK. But it's one of those weird things that uh, we had uh, Sesame Street and we had Fraggle Rock. Uh, but the Muppets themselves, eh, not really a big deal over here. If you're into uh, Muppets. Yeah, so they've gone they've, they've gone together much easier this time because everything's kind of become rigid now and workable. Fraggle Rock, yeah. Are you otherwise a musician, Javid? Uh, I play piano, I play synths, and I play guitars. I'm very fond of guitars. I've got quite a number of them. Uh, right. I'll put these ones in. I've got to remember which one was which. Uh, so 27 is, when we're looking at it from this angle, 27, the one I'm putting in is an upright at the bottom here. So I do hope that we, we can get something to sound okay on this. Uh, Hulig has built it already and he says it sounds terrible. Uh, but then uh, Magetz have very nicely volunteered to take recordings from me and Hulig and make them sound awesome in FL Studio.
Oh, that sounds nasty, doesn't it? But once once you're in with some of these parts, they're never coming out. That's uh, that's really nice now. It's robust. <laughs> it was a bit weird, was he? There's nothing wrong with being a bit weird. It's French. How could an honourable Englishman build such a thing? Well, I'm not getting into uh, the politics of Brexit. Oh, Tutis with the Danacron burn there. <laughs> Got to build a cat trap. Hmm. Well, I know. I know. Danicron, you uh, not the Danicron. This uh, dragon eye. And dragon eye hunts his own food. And uh, well, a cat trap. I'll leave that to your imagination. Right. So now we're up to an exciting part where we're going to have to try and merge the two pieces. And I think that becomes a, a good milestone of the build, because once these two pieces are together, they ain't coming apart. It's surprising how many people will watch somebody build a hurdy-gurdy. <laughs> Take my time, I'm not going to force anything, if it doesn't feel like it's going to go, we're going to investigate why. It's time to get some creaks and bends and things, should all line up. Okay, that one's good, that one's good. It all seems a little bit of an angle. You see, looking at this, it's not quite gone in uh, parallel. You see, we've got little gaps along this, I think. I'm going to lift that one out just a touch. Just to take some of that strain off it. But it does say use the hammer. I don't know. When this sits down, it should be completely flush. Make sure the gear lines up. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, 
I am pleased with that. It's actually now it's sort of all rigid and held in place. It's uh, yeah, it's it's coming together. It's actually sort of it's it's made itself all line up nice and smoothly. It's very very well designed. I'm I'm, I'm impressed. Hello, you are still working on the thing from Peter Parker. Yes! <laughs> uh, what, wait, what does that part do in the hurdy-gurdy? I'm not sure, I think, I think this bit, I think it's purely decorative. I, I think that you, you get to sort of see inside the thing and it's got nice big moving parts. Uh, I did wonder, is it is it some so it's just a bit like a flywheel maybe? Uh, this bit's obviously this bit's very important in the hurdy gurdy, but uh, I think all of this is just decorative. But you know what? It's properly solid, right? It's it's really good. I like I like well designed things. There's something nice about something that's well well designed. I mean, it's it's reasonably free flowing. Look at that for, for plywood. That's amazing. Right. Okay. Well, you know. Good. Let's 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 plow on. Right. Turn the page. So now this looks looks like we're getting less fiddly stuff now and more sort of the real structural stuff. Okay. Well, that's that's good. Oh, I'm really pleased with how well that's uh, that's turned out so far. I'm going to have another celebratory slurp of Vimto. Right. So yeah, the uh, nice work. It is actually quite amazing. Uh, how much was the kit? So the kit was, uh, I think it was about sixty pounds. They're not cheap, uh, but the the reviews were were high. And, and a guy I know on the Discord server, Hugh Lee, he recommended it. Said it was good fun. And they've got all sorts of like really complicated, elaborate kits. Now, what I like most about it is you buy some of these kits, these electronic kits at least, and you think, oh, it's only going to take an hour and a half. You get an hour and a half's fun out of making it. So, for example, the uh, let's stretch around the uh, the car. Now, this this only took took me about half an hour to put together, and even that was on a like a lazy uh, chill stream thing. The when I got my Lego Ecto One, for example, right, again only takes about half an hour. A bit of plant on my Lego Ecto One. Uh, so it, 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 you know, they don't take that long, uh, but this one, <laughs> kind of expecting it, oh, it'll only take me an hour or so, uh, looks like it's going to take the best part of a couple of days. With that price, it's uh, not worth to go to the library and use the laser cut myself. Uh, well, I think the, the design of it is obviously, some, you have to know what you're doing, and that, that's, what's, uh, that's why I think it's very clever. Uh, those that don't know, I, I work in a mechanical build shop myself, uh, and you need to know the materials. In this case, you need to know how this plywood is going to come together. You've got this limitation on how wide anything can be. I mean, I was very impressed with the pegs that go in the end. I thought they were amazing. The, the, the ultimate fit of it all and the tolerances when it came together is just absolutely spot on. I like it. Right, now we're up to... No, oh, this is the biggest part, I think. Part one. Uh, which is actually part 30. So, the, the kit, uh, I mean, I've kind of shown sure. it comes on all of these... Uh, there's quite a few of these boards uh, with all the different cutouts on ready to go. Now, we're looking for... Part 30. That's part 31 on that one. Part 30, there we go. 
And the, the company, and it's, it's not a sponsored anything, I have paid for this myself, uh, is a company called uh, U Gears. And if you go on Amazon, they've got loads of stuff. There seems to be a few uh, companies that do the same thing, and these the arrival one was something like, oh, oh rocks, or something like that. Now, the reviews weren't as strong for their products as they were for these. Now, we'll try to remember to do some of the things on camera. It's probably, uh, I don't necessarily need to be as delicate with this one, do we? As he goes and proceeds to snap it in two. It does feel like the, the biggest part of the, the build. And one of the things I know about certainly working with laser cut perspex is as you cut it, the perspex itself shrinks, so you have to take that into account. I guess that's not something you worry too much about with laser cut plywood, but then a, the cut removes material, so hmm, maybe you do have to worry about it, don't know. A first time chat from Theld of Allen. Yes, it's a, uh, it's a metronome. Uh, so it's not a metronome. <laughs> it's not a metronome. No, it's a hurdy gurdy. See, it says so on the uh, on the panel. Hurdy gurdy. And this is the base. Now, I don't think it actually is going to behave like a proper sound box. Uh, all I've got to do, according to these instructions, is slot that onto here, and everything should line up. Right. Really? It just wants me to have at it? Now, frustratingly, there isn't sort of a a flat side I can put this down on to apply any pressure because there's a great big wheel in the way. And the instructions don't seem to imply anything other than just slam these together so I'll have a go. Yeah I think once it's once you get going with it it does seem to want to slot together. That corner looks a bit tricky. Uh, yeah, okay. I think maybe, maybe on the whole I've been a bit too delicate trying to put this together, but I don't want to break it. You get these delightful creaks and cracks which you think, oh dear, clip. That one's clipped in. Ooh, click, clunk, clunk. Well, it is resonating, actually. This is behaving like a soundboard. It's getting very loud. Clip, 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 clip. I thought hurdy gurdy was just a phrase. I think we, we, we were discussing that earlier. If you grew up with the Muppets, yeah, you're probably familiar with it. Right, okay. Uh, I think we're. I, I'd like to sort of like leave that in shot because it kind of shows people that we're building it, but we're, we're moving on to sort of a different component of it all now. Uh, so we need parts 33 and 34. And there's two 34, so 33, and they're on board. They're on this this one that's full of delicate stuff. So I think we're getting to the point where we're going to start making the neck. Uh, so 34 are these two pegs. Uh, 
33 is this board. Be nice if it gave them proper names. I think we'll just cut that out as well. No. I think it's entertaining that all of these so-called programmers in the audience are actually just hurdy-gurdy construction enthusiasts. Right, it says I need to have this part, uh, which is that way round, according to the picture, and in these two big holes I insert these two pegs. Now, they've got some rotational position setting on them. Uh, it then says I should apply wax to. Well, it says I should apply wax to the outer parts. Well, we'll have a look. Uh, I'm going to need parts 35, which I'm guessing are those up here. 35. I and mean, these look important. This looks like actual musical mechanism. Thirty-five and thirty-six, which is yeah, that's a, that's a decorative part. Thirty-six up here. Yeah, we'll pop the whole thing out first. Yeah. Uh, what was the price of this? It was about 60 uh, British pounds. So it is not cheap, not cheap. But uh, I'm certainly having a lot of fun with it. I'm blown away by the, the designing of it, the, the actual engineering quality of it is uh, very impressive. So it says I, okay, I need to actually finish these surfaces. Uh, where's my bit of sandpaper gone? So it looks like this is important, and I don't know why. Let me just uh, move my camera a little bit. There. There we go. But these are right, the fact that these pegs can rotate in these holes, and the fact that these look like they have a runner on them in the shape of a cam, an interesting cam, tells me that these are going to be using for, to set some distance. Now, if we're setting distances in music, invariably that's you know, tuning. So it might be quite uh, important to get this right. That's nice and smooth. And it says wax these as well, so we will. They're obviously going to be rubbing up against something which are potentially stretching the string out later.
Look at the colour rendition on this camera. My hands seem very red. They're not actually that pink. Oh, Gus goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. That's uh, that way round. And we're inserting that on there. Okay, and that one we're setting on the like so. Then we've got the second part, which all of that goes through. And yeah, I think I think this is a tuning mechanism because. I th I'm going to hazard a guess that the strings go through these grooves and uh, so let's line this up so you can see what's going on uh, too many transformations in my brain going on here which way are we uh, that way right so you can see there's a groove there and as I as I turn or as I attempt to turn these things it's a bit difficult when I sandwich them like that as I turn this uh, the sort of logarithmic shape of it's going to push that up and down. So that's going to change the pitch of something and I'm guessing it's the string. Nonetheless, that bit uh, now gets sandwiched into parts 37. 37, 37, what board is 37? Uh, 37 I think we're on a new a new board actually. What we've not done yet. No, no, thirty-seven. Oh, well, that that's uh, that's not that bit. Okay. Ah, that bit comes later. 37 is on... Oh, there's all sorts of different boards. Okay, I'm trying to read the instructions incorrectly here. Alright, let's have a look through. We're going to need 38, which are those. So we'll take those whilst we're here. And we're going to need... Doesn't look like 37 on there. Not on there. This board is currently untouched. We've not done anything on there yet. Although I think we will be. Uh, 37, there we go. Ooh, these look these look delicate. More intricate parts. So the two 37s and the 38s. And that's to sandwich this together. See, I'm carefully using the instruction manual. That's just another layer of protection against just stabbing my desk. I have one of these self-healing cutting mats. Uh, well, we'll have to see how well it self-heals after all this abuse. So parts 37, uh, we take the bit that we've made and we're going to look at it like this. Uh, 37, these two are identical. I think they just slot onto the back. And they've got these little, uh, these little gripping uh, sort of one-way prongs here. Now once these are clipped on, now these are, again aren't ever coming off. So I wonder if just before we get carried away with this, uh, I'm also going to lubricate the uh, sides of these. Uh...
Right, let's, uh, let's commit to this then. I'll not clip them both into place just yet. Make sure we've got everything the right way around before we do. So just a dry fit. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Right, let's commit. There we go. Click, click. And click. Uh, that one's not moving freely. Oh, there we go, because it hadn't clicked. And now it is. See, somebody's really tolerant to that very well. For plywood. It's amazing. Okay, to the top of that we need to put in 38. So we only need two, but there is a spare provided. It's good that they provide spurs, but it's also worrying at the same time. Oh, yeah. uh, these are going to sit, let's look at the ornate part, make it look like the instructions. That's going to sit there, and on the top, we've got an arrow pointing out. We're going to sandwich those together. I'm going to get some creaking. Ooh. And one for the other way too. So they are facing outwards, so that's good. Squeezing the bits together is actually one of the hardest parts about doing these kits. I need to somehow squeeze that on there. Just use the tool. Okay, that's gone clip, 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 clip. Those are still free moving ish. Yeah, everything looks like it's lined up and square, so that's good. Okay. Then we need those 39s, which are these little wheels uh, that we had earlier. And those little wheels are going to poke through and sit on these blocks. Uh, one little wheel. Now these look like little gripping wheels, so I guess these, these are our tuning of some description. I don't think they're, they're meant to be sort of gears. I think they're just uh, knurled so you can you can turn these things. Well, they do seem a bit tight. Uh, the groove is long ways. Okay. I think I'll wax the other one before we uh, try pushing a wheel on. 
Only because the wheels are very small. To push these on does seem to require quite a bit of force. Remember, this is only plywood. Hmm, I've got a feeling if I try sort of having a go at that one, I might break the little wheel. That one's gone on nicely, and that one is a bit tight. There we go. Okay, well, tuning pegs. Starting to turn it into something. Uh, right, so now it says we want to take ooh, part 31, which is the top, and part 32, and part 3. So part 31 is the decorative uh, finished top part. It's got parts inside it which uh, I don't think we're readily using, so I'm just going to pop out all of that. And that's part 86. I think that's used later on for, for something. I'm going to have to make sure I don't lose any of these bits. Uh, but it does have a rather delicate part 32, which I saw before. This one's going to be fun to pop out. So 32 is there's this delicate ornate piece here. Fortunately we've popped out sort of the stuff around it already. Uh, we just have to take our time. It's not, it doesn't seem too bad actually. And just take off these gear bits. Oh yeah, see very delicate thin bits. But it's purely ornate because I think that just sits around there. And we need two little of the uh, number three pegs, uh, which we had a bunch of before. That's a number three. These little pegs. And these needed a little bit of finishing work, didn't they? What was it? There we go. There's one of them. Uh, I don't have any others floating around, but I've got some spare ones here. So I'll take one of those. I don't think I've lost a, a number three peg anywhere. Maybe one of those isn't spare. Number three, can't see. Uh, but anyway, we're going to fasten together these two uh, big parts with the pegs going through the underside of the board. Like so. So that's going in there. And that one's going in there. And on a flattish surface this is where I can successfully break this part by pushing it onto these pegs. <laughs> Correct. Uh, I haven't finished it yet. Is it spare or not? <laughs> That's a good observation. 
Right, once we've built that bit, I think we turn the page. Well, everything that's got a three with a plus on it. Uh, the plus indicates a spare part. Now, the, the whole row of threes that we've been cutting from uh, doesn't seem to have uh, en enough. Uh, so we'll, we will see. <laughs> Right, so once I've got this bit, I can then marry to it. Yeah, so this looks like it's a, some sort of tensioning mechanism for the main string. So that's going to sit in there. Uh, but it advises me to wax these first. I'm going to start heeding the advice on the wax, because it does actually seem to make a bit of a difference. Almost as if the designers that I've been lauding so much uh, actually know what they're doing. More so than I do. And this is going to sit then on the. <laughs> he says optimistically that it's going to fit. Oh, yeah, there we go. So that's going to send slide through. And it gives us these sort of hoops, which we've got uh, some special pegs, uh, item 40. Which is going to sort of nail this in place. Then we've got our two little tuning prongs at the back for the the two strings. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never played a hurdy gurdy. I don't know where you tune it, but I'm guessing. Uh, I'm guessing these are not fundamental instrument controls. Uh, these will be just for yeah, fine tuning something. Right. Let's uh, find these pegs. So this is peg forty that we need now. Not on that one. Uh, it's the one we... Oh, we've actually used this board, I don't think. It is, yes, a new board. That one? No, it's this one. Oh, we have. We've took the gear piece out of the peg. For, oh, there's a whole load more threes there. There we go. That's where they are. Uh, 40, 40, 40. 40. Right, this looks like something we're going to be doing quite a bit of. Now these special nails. I could take the whole 40 thing out, but I'm not going to. We need uh, four of these. Yes. Uh, and it says wax these. Fine. Because it looks like the design of these is, is to compress as it's going through this hole. Once these have gone in, I think the only way to get these off will be to, to snap them out. And it says we take our board, we take our pieces, and we're going to slide one through the and one through there. And as you might expect, then these ones are going through the inside. Like that. Where's my little hammer? Ah, you see, now they're going to clash. Are they? Maybe, maybe not. Sort of lever them in. Uh, 
Okay. Well, that is fastened onto there. So I'm guessing ultimately this is going to end up so sitting on there. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. So I think we were right. This is uh, this uh, in this in this the sound hole here is purely a decorative decorative thing. It has no no purpose. Oh, I have noticed a small mistake that we've made, but there's not much I can do about it now. Uh, it looks like the uh, decorative piece that we were putting on had the U Gears logo on it, which I'm guessing should be uh, not mirrored. I don't think that's going to compromise anything in the build, uh, but nonetheless, that's how we know it's the OLC one. <laughs> When this is going up for auction in Sotheby's in 10 years' time, for or it's an NFT or whatever, we'll digitise it somehow. When we get that far, uh, that's how we'll know. I just like glancing, glancing at the uh, one loan, one loan phone there. Uh, right, where are we up to? Because it looks like it's another decorative build part. I just want to know when does it want us to start sandwiching together the two main components. It doesn't for a while. Uh, it looks like that page is all about the crankshaft. So this page and the next page is all about making the crankshaft for the end. Uh, which I think is probably a good time to leave it then. So I'm pretty pleased. I'm pleased with how, how smooth the mechanism is coming is working now. That's quite nice. Uh, we need to apply the, the rose into the, uh, the wheel. In a bit we'll sandwich that together. You can move the image in the stream. Yeah, well, that's how we'll have to do. I, I, I'm still impressed with this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to squeeze it together just yet, because we can see this is where the crankshaft mechanism is going to sit. And it's meant to be all ornate at this end of the box. But these holes at the bottom and these holes at the top tell me this is going to clamp together something important. Uh, that's going to be turning this. And I get the whole system relies on being able to turn this reliably. I quite like the sides. I mean, you, these are sort of the things we, they could have just lasered these details into the board, but they didn't. They actually went ahead and made laser cut pieces. Uh, so it gives it this uh, genuine depth to it. I think it's quite nice. I was thinking, would it have been like nice to sort of stain it or something before we started building? Because I can't do it now, of course. But then I would be worried about things like the tolerances all falling apart. How well that actually spins is... I, it's blown my mind how smooth that, <laughs> that actually is. <laughs> right, I think that's all for today. So uh, thank you for, for watching. Uh, the next Code Zone will be back to code, I think. Um, because on Tuesday night I'm looking at... Oh, what, which day is the 3rd? Is the 3rd a Wednesday? Because I don't have any internet on the 3rd. They're replacing my box. Uh, so I won't be around uh, on the 3rd. Uh, but until then, uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Hope it's been some good fun. Uh, take care.